Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Rivera Urban Homestead. On this edition we're going to be talking about herbs. We're going to talk about the uses in the kitchen and also in the garden. I picked 11 different herbs that we're going to talk about today. We're going to show you what to companion plant them with and also what insects they repel. This is a very good episode and it's very informative, especially this time of year. The garden's growing, it's starting to happen. It's springtime in the upper climates, you know. But down here in Zone 9, it's been pretty much summer all year round. But the bugs become an issue. And with certain plants, they really become an issue. So these different herbs not only help in the kitchen, make your foods taste great, but they also help repel bugs in the garden and attract beneficial ones. So let's take a look at what I got from the garden center today and we'll go from there. Okay everyone, the first herb I have here is basil. It is an annual and it's said to enhance the taste of tomatoes and peppers and should be planted with them. It, they said plant them about a foot apart in full sun and in real hot climates water freely and keep mulched. Don't forget to pinch off all the flower buds so the leaves continue to grow. You want to harvest it throughout the summer you know for a continued supply. Best storage method is freezing. Now what this plant repels is flies and mosquitoes and is great for Mediterranean dishes and Italian recipes. So all you need to do with the basil, plant it close to tomatoes and peppers, get it in some full sun, and start harvesting. Alright, second we have lavender. Lavender is a beautiful perennial plant. It does like full sun. It likes a near neutral soil. Um, it is a member of the mint family. Its flowers and leaves can be used in cooking. Um, even if you do not cook with it, it does make a great addition to the garden because it repels moths, fleas, flies, and mosquitoes. So it's beautiful smell, beautiful look, and it repels mosquitoes. And around here, I'm all in on that. So second herb, lavender. Okay, guys, I was gonna, I was looking for lemongrass, but I couldn't find it. But I did find lemon palm or balm. It is a perennial. It does like sun to partial shade. Um, it is basically like mint, so you would treat it as such. It is evasive. You need to plant it to where you don't want it spreading all over the place. Um, and it repels pretty much the same stuff as mint does. It repels mosquitoes, ants, and flies. And you rub that leaf, man, and you smell lemon. It is awesome. It would be a great addition to soups, maybe stews and such like that, maybe even fish dishes. Lemon balm, number three. Okay, and here's number four herb is the mint. It is a perennial. It does like sun to partial shade. It does come in a variety of flavors, peppermint, spearmint, apple mint, even chocolate mint. It will grow, like I said, in sun to partial shade, in well-drained uh, soil. It repels mosquitoes, ants, and flies. And um, it grows it in containers because it is invasive. It works well with lamb, roast, fish, even jellies and teas. Spread out throughout the garden and keep by nearby plants just to um, keep those plants insect free. Very good addition to the garden mint. This particular one is just called sweet mint. Number five is rosemary. Again a perennial. Likes full sun. It doesn't need perfect weather man to grow it. Most plants suffer because of too much attention versus a uh, lack of. Just make sure it has sun, some good drainage and good air circulation. And the leaves and flowers are edible. Goes great in Mediterranean foods. It repels mosquitoes and other harmful insects. So rosemary, number five. All right, number six is chives. Oh yeah, they're perennials, member of the onion family. They do prefer full sun. And both the flowers and leaves are edible and go great in anything, really. Vegetable dishes, casseroles, rice, eggs, sauce. They repel uh, carrot flies, Japanese beetles, and aphids. So get you some chives in there. Okay, guys, next plant is dill, number seven. It's an annual, a self-seeding plant. It does not transplant well, so you just want to direct sow it in the summer or 
again, you could buy a little uh, transplant like I did. Water freely during the grows and growing season. Um, it's most commonly used in soups, stews, and for pickling. It attracts uh, beneficial insects such as wasps, wasps and predatory insects. So definitely want some dill in there. Start eating away all those bad insects. And number eight is oregano. It is a perennial. It's a hardy plant that makes good ground cover. It loves the sun. So make sure there's plenty of it. Okay, good for flavoring fish, meat, and sauces and goes well with vegetables, roast beef, lamb, chicken, and pork. It also repels just multiple insects. Number eight. Number nine, we have parsley. It likes nitrogen-rich soil. It does well in full sun or part shade. Um, it is a biannual, which means basically it grows one year and it seeds the second year and dies. Um, it can be used for flavoring meat dishes, soups, and salads, but most popularly it's just a garnish. But beetles do not like parsley. And if left to flower, it attracts wasps and other beneficial insects. So okay. get some parsley in your garden. All right, guys, number 10 is thyme. It is a perennial and it likes full sun. It's highly aromic herb and it grows well in somewhat dry sunny conditions. It is good in Mediterranean, or actually, I'm sorry, it is a Mediterranean herb and is considered to be an antiseptic and preservative and have preservative properties. So it says it's been um, used medically as well as preserving meats. It's a low growing woody perennial and the flowers are edible. It goes well in tomato sauces, cheeses, eggs, vegetable dishes, and it repels white flies, corn ear worms, tomato horn worms, cabbage lopers, and maggots. So a very good thing to have in the garden. Last but not least, cilantro. It's an annual, used in many Asian dishes, Chinese, Thai, Mexican dishes, um, good for salsa. It repels flies, mosquitoes, potato beetles, and spider mites, and it is also an annual. It likes sun to part shade, maybe three to six hours. So that's the last one we're going to talk about today, cilantro. All right, guys, so now that I told you what herbs I did pick up, the 11 that I got, now we're going to talk about companion planting. Basically, that's just planting herbs along with your vegetables that complement each other. Um, and, you know, obviously the herbs are good in your dinners, but they also repel certain insects. So certain herbs work well with certain plants. So let's go over that real quick and I'll just kind of run through where I placed all of my herbs. Okay, so in my tomato bed, putting basil right there. The other basil right there. Thyme is going to be in here, along with parsley. So parsley, thyme, and my two basils are going to be in here. And that's just because they all enhance the growth of tomato and pepper plants. Um, basil is really good with that. Thyme improves the growth of the tomato plants as well. Um, parsley goes really good with a lot of different things. So, And they will help repel any insects from this area. So that is the tomato bed. And also obviously the pepper bed. I got the Korean dark greens in here. Lavender get kind of tall and they like full sun so I'm planning on building this little section up a little bit and this is right where my you know the bean um, bed is so I'm on the side of the house right by the compost. So yeah, we're going to put the lavender right there. We'll build that soil up and we'll plant them right there. So they can get kind of tall and still be out of the way. Also, um, let's move into the bean bed. Okay, so in the bean bed, we are putting oregano right there. Putting dill right there. And rosemary gets kind of tall too, so I wanted it toward the end. So there's the rosemary. And all of those improve the growth of beans. Um, let's see, the rosemary actually is a companion of the cabbage, beans, carrots, and sage. 
and um, the dill, it helps improve the growth of, you know, lettuces, cabbages, and stuff like that. And our oregano over there improves the growth of beans. So again, they all are good companions for the beans. So we'll have three different ones in here along with the lavender over there. And that'll help again repel more insects and attract beneficial ones. Okay, my mint plant is going to get planted in this because they are invasive. They will spread. So you definitely don't want them just to be able to go wherever. Also, the lemongrass, or I'm sorry, lemon balm, which is basically like lemon mint. Same thing, very evasive, invasive. So we're going to get keep those in containers and just put them in the, in the garden. And the last herb, you know, I'm going to just put it right here. It's cilantro. It does like being by tomatoes, so we're going to tuck him right there in that empty space. And we'll have all our herbs planted. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot chives. I just have some empty area in this bed, so I'm just going to put the chives in here. And we'll just let them kind of grow. Okay, everybody, so we covered quite a bit of stuff on herbs today. Um, I gave you the 11 herbs that I bought and put in my garden. We talked about what to use them in for the kitchen. We talked about what uses they are for the garden as far as repelling what type of insects and also bringing in beneficial insects. We also spoke about companion planting, which companion planting has been going on since the Native American, the Indians, um, before the Europeans came. They were doing the three sisters, which was the corn, beans, and squash. They would companion plant them together. It's been going on forever. If you put different varieties in the same area, it's harder for those pests and those insects to target what plant they want. So if you just put a bunch of tomatoes in one spot and that's it, you're going to probably get tomato hornworms because they're going to find them quick. But if you mix in some different things, maybe a pepper plant and then some herbs, different flowers, you get it to where they're kind of confused. They have to pinpoint that one particular plant. So herbs are great for helping to repel. Um, this, when it gets a little dark out, not dark, I'm sorry. Hold on. So later on today, it's pretty hot out right now, so I'll wait until this evening when the sun kind of goes down a little, and then I'll plant all these herbs into the beds, get them watered in really well, and we'll just watch their uh, production. We'll just see how they do, and we'll just start picking them, and, and we'll have plenty of uh, herbs in the garden. So my wife should be happy about that. Um, just do your research on whatever herbs you like. Research it figure out which ones you want, where to put them, what they go good with, and just do it, man. Get herbs in your garden. Companion plant. And also, put plants in there, um, herbs in there that you might not even use in the kitchen. Put them in anyway, just to help repel the certain bugs and stuff, right? So, they're a good thing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was on the 11 herbs that I put in my garden to help repel insects, companion plant with my uh, other vegetables to help them out and also what to use in the kitchen. So you guys have a good rest of the weekend and we'll see you next weekend. Bye.